Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. <clears throat> good morning. Welcome to Morning Cup with Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. <clears throat> without any more delay, without further ado, let's get right into it, shall we? Father God in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for another day, Lord God. Thank you for the words you woke me up with this morning, God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that teaches us how to live, that guides us and helps us and shows us the way in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for giving me rest last night, for putting me to sleep, giving me rest and waking me up, Lord God. And God, just for keeping me and being with me, for, sh for showing me, Lord God, that, that you care about me. I'm grateful that you care about me, Lord God. Thank you, God, that you care about us. Even those who don't acknowledge your care and your love and your grace and your favor and your mercy towards them, Lord, we still thank you, God, that you show it towards them. I pray you would open their eyes and their hearts their minds so that they would receive whatever you have for them, Lord God. God, help us to receive whatever you have for us. And God, help us to, to love you with all our hearts and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. Use me as the vessel that you put the word in this morning and use me as the messenger who delivers your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> amen, amen, and amen. All right. Today's scripture is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. We're going to do verses 4 through 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 13. It says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. Love does not seek its own. It's not provoked. It thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but it rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. But we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide 
faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. <clears throat> I don't know if I should even try to quote this stuff on here. Man, no matter what I look at on social media, there's always something that there's always something that you shouldn't be putting in your eyes on social media. I ain't lying. I I just clicked on my Edward Broom post to try to post the uh to try to share the thing here, Monica. And there goes somebody with their dress pulled up. That stuff is appropriate for Facebook. Apparently, it's appropriate for. Walmart and grocery stores too. Cause since I see so much stuff every day, ooh, the scripture's so long. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, we talked about love. This is the love chapter, and I didn't. I did a sermon on the love chapter. Um, I don't know when a while ago though, but I and I went through each line, each, each clause. And so I didn't go through each clause this morning. Instead, I probably went through none of the clauses. I probably mentioned a couple of them, but there are a lot. There's a lot to there's a lot to unpackage right here in just these verses describing love, verses four through thirteen. If you start at verse one, <laughs> you got even more to unpackage. You know what I'm saying? There's a whole lot. And so what I did is just kind of put put things um Put things into a perspective of what is not love versus what is love, you know, because today's society, for the most part, believes that everything should be done in love. I believe that all, it, somehow all all the people in the United States seem to be believers, you know, Christians or whatever. No, all, everybody claims to be a Christian, and everybody says you must do things in love. But their 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 perspective of love is not a biblical perspective of love. This is the biblical perspective of love right here. But Jesus says something that say, that, uh, that shows, hey, you're not doing that in love because you're not keeping my commands. He said, if you love me, John 14, 15, or John 15, yeah, John 14, 15, Jesus says, you love me, you keep my command. And today's society says that everything must be done in love. They say in love, allow your child to cut off his genitals and take Hormone medication if he chooses. They say if you don't do it, it's not love. And if uh and if Kamala is elected, if you don't do it, and not only is it not love, but if you don't do it, you can go to jail or have your children taken away from you because you're neglecting their uh their choice to to uh you know to do whatever they want to do to their bodies, no matter if they're five years old or fifteen years old. You know, it's their choice. They can do what they want to do to their genital, their genitalia, and you have to support that, or you go to jail. So and so, not on. I mean, that's the government for you. Not only is it not love if you don't support their decision, but it's also going to be a crime if you don't support their decision. Um, in love, this today's society says in love, support and encourage the sins of your loved ones. You know, you got that. Uh, Help him, Lord. Help him, Jesus. You got that uh that uncle or that cousin or somebody who doing something inappropriate with with the children. You know what I'm saying? But in love, support and encourage and get them help. You know what I'm saying? Versus tell them it's a sin. You know what I'm saying? Tell them where well, it, 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 you just born like that, you messed up. Instead of telling them, hey, that's a sin. You gotta be born again. Or 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 not that much, not not to go as far as that, because that is a crime. They will support that, but to say um, 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 you're gonna lie for somebody because you love them, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna you or or no, I said support and encourage their sins, which means if they, I saw some yesterday, but they may they may have a lot of times people post stuff on social media. They either they reading it wrong when they post it, or, so they don't correct it, or either they just don't have the proper grammar and making grammatical errors, or um, or, or they crazy. Somebody said something about it's not a sin to have sex before marriage, but I'm, it may just have been grammatically incorrect. But that's to support and encourage sin 
telling them go in on out there, go on, fool around and try and get your taste and see what if who you like and this and that. That's you know what I'm saying, supporting and encouraging sin. They say in love we must do that. They say if somebody uh uh doing something wrong, stealing something from work, you gotta support them. If it ain't it ain't hurting that job, what they'll say, you ain't hurting them people at that job. They multi-millionaires are big in there. So you taking two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars to make up for all your uh all your pain and suffering on the job, you ain't hurting them, so I I support you. I encourage you to do it, but don't get caught. That's what they say. In love, you must support sin. That's what today's society says. Today's society says in love, you must willingly go against the word of God or change the word of God to 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 uh to suit the desires and lifestyles of your loved ones. See what I'm saying? And the reason why now now people that do that for loved ones, so a mother or a father will lie for their children. They commit a sin for them. I'm not saying everybody says a mother or a father would lie to protect their children. You know what I'm saying? And they and they would feel justified in it. Or they wouldn't even think about justification. It's just that 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 uh that that parental love that unconditional love for his or her child causes him to to go down a path without even consulting God or without even thinking about or or or, ex, or they will go down the path and accept the consequences for their actions or they might be or they might be deceived and say I'm doing this in the name of love so it's good one little sin ain't gonna hurt but I got a lie for my son or he gonna go to prison for twenty years. You know what I'm saying? I gotta lie on the oaths, or I just got I gotta make up a lie say he was here, or else he's gonna do twenty years in prison. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so they weigh out which one is better. Me tell a little lie, God understands, I love my child, or my child go to prison for twenty years and I tell the truth. You know, and so they weigh it out and say, I'm gonna tell a little lie and help my God help my child to not go to prison regardless of what the word of God says. And so, and so that's what today's society says. We're going to change the word of God or rebel against the word of God or, or go against the word of God or ignore the word of God to help our loved ones. Now, like I say, it's easy for, for, for family to do that. It's easy. It's very easy to, to find yourself committing a sin to help out your family. But when the word of God says, uh, uh, love your neighbors, Oh man, that they just make it grounds to lie and commit sin for everybody and anybody in the world. It's like God is at the bottom of the totem pole. I, and I'm saying that to say this. Yeah, true enough, people have put their family before God and they feel justified in that. My wife and I are watching Law and Order SVU. Oh, that's two two nights in a row. They was talking about family. Last night I hate the episode. Detective Rollins, uh, her her sister came onto the episode and her mother came on there. I hate drama. It was a whole episode full of drama. I'm like, I hate this. I hate what she's saying. I hate what she's doing right now. I hate what she is doing. I hate what she is doing too. All three of their actions I'm against. So my wife just sitting there looking at me just laughing. <laughs> Cause I'm she know I'm like drama. It's, it was just all about family drama last night. And I was like, oh, I don't wanna I I, I ain't saying that negative. I know they acting, but I was like, I just can't stand what she's doing. She crazy. She, you know, stuff like that. That took her. But anyway, it, and anyway, um, and so, and, and so, and but to, but last, that was the night before last. And last night, it was a uh, a group of family, uh, a big, a big, a big group family, and they and the son was it was thirteen children or something, and they and the son was doing inappropriate things with. With the sisters and with people in the community and all that, and they were covering up. They were hiding it. They were hiding it. They were covering it up. They were telling lies. They were doing this. They were doing that. I understand when family commits sin to help our family because family is strong. Family feel like, uh, and I, I said that, and I said that those two episodes say this because the mother said, Detective Rollins, you're going against your family because you set your sister up to go to jail. And she just told her sister, you need to come over here and turn yourself in because you committed a crime. You robbed a man. Turn, Come turn yourself in. You know what I'm saying? It's, and so they went over. She called her sister, whatever. They went over there and picked her up. And the, and the mother said, 
you turned your back on family. And that's how people are. They feel like you must go against everybody and everything, including God, for your family whom you love. See how love, see how this love thing, see, I ain't just, I'm not, I'm not breaking down and exegeting 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm telling you what love is not this morning. Because all these things right here, this is love. But we think that everything is love and everything is not love. And we believe that you can go against God's word in the name of love. That's what we believe. And and and, and so I, I understand that, that people do it for family. I understand that. I don't condone it. I don't encourage it. I'm 100% against sinning for your family, distorting scriptures for your family, rebelling against God, against the word of God for your family, breaking laws, uh, committing crimes for your family. I am against that, but I understand why they do it though. You see, I don't have that inside of me to go and do it, but I understand why they go and do it. And so it's in the name of love. But then when you have a scripture like Matthew 22, uh, 39, which says, and love your neighbor as yourself. When they say, wait a minute, now I, I can commit all these sins, go against God, break all the law, commit crime, do whatever I want to do for my family because I love my family and I'm justified in it because I love my family. But the scripture tell me to love my neighbor. So that means I can do it for not only for my family, but for everybody else. I can commit sin for my neighbor, for every, for anybody that I see. I can encourage their sin. I can commit sin. I can condone their sin. I can help them com as long as it's in the name of love. See what I'm getting at? I understand why people do it for their families, but not, a, but but a misinterpretation of the scripture causes people to believe that you can commit sin for anybody as long as it's in the name of love. That's not what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not selfish. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the what? The truth. Love endures all things, bears all things, hopes all things. This is what love is right here. But love, guess what? It ain't got nothing to do with your in uh, with your uh, 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 promotion of sin. There's nothing in here. Look, when we um, <clears throat> God woke me up with a word this morning. I'm gonna tell you what it is. I ain't gonna buy it, but it's down there. God woke me up with a word this morning. It can't. It was another probably yesterday and today. But this morning, too, I love you, Lord. I love Lord. I love. Uh, this morning, I heard the word as I woke up. This this is like second time in the week. <laughs> the, as I woke up, I'm talking about I, I heard part of the scriptures I woke up. I didn't know where it was the other day or yesterday, and I didn't know where it was today. I had to search it up. But it's Romans, I put it, Romans 14, 17. He says, uh, he said, God woke me up this morning. Now let me tell you, I can't say how he said it, but this is how God said, it. I'm gonna try to, I'm trying to compose myself. He said, uh, the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking. As I'm, you know, I, I, I heard it coming on down I, and it just echoed on down. So I had to find it. But it's Romans 14 and 17. It says the kingdom of God. This is what God told me this morning. And it goes, it goes right in here to 1 Corinthians 13 and what I'm preaching this morning. What I'm taking this morning. The kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking and doing whatever you can do. It's about righteousness, joy, and peace. In the Holy Spirit, that's what God's kingdom is about. And so, so uh, uh, all the other things are walking according to the flesh. All that stuff I mentioned, uh, 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 helping them to do this, encouraging them to do that, supporting this, allowing them to do that. All that stuff is walking according to the flesh. Because you think about what you can do in the flesh, you concerned about what they can do in the flesh. I love my children. I love my wife. I love myself. You know, I'll probably put that in, in a certain order. I don't know. I don't know if it even come in order. I love my wife, myself, my children. I love my children, myself, my wife. I love my, I, I love all three of us. I also love my neighbor. But you know something else, though? I love the Lord more. 
And I tell my wife that. She probably heard me say it. I love, she probably heard me say it right now. They might be woke as out the seven. I love the Lord more, more than I love myself, my children, and my wife combined. And put my neighbors in there too. I still love the Lord more than I love my wife, my neighbor, my children, and myself combined. I do. A lot of people do. And I'm not on I'm not over there by myself. A lot and many people, many, many people are willing to make more sacrifices for God rather than themselves or their family, their children, their wife. Because, because they know that with the Lord, everything is all good, man. And so God told me this morning that the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking and doing whatever you can do. And 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 it's about righteousness joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. That's what the word of God says in Romans 14, 17. Uh, when we walk in the spirit, we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh and we are considered children of God. Now, when you look at this, I got a lot more commentary to go, but we good. <clears throat> well, when you look at this, fulfilling the lust of the flesh, you might be fulfilling the lust of your flesh, the lust of their flesh, the lust of his flesh, the lust of her flesh, all those things. That's the flesh. These things that feed the spirit, the stuff that feeds the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control, unselfishness. These things, uh, uh, these com compassion, mercy, grace, forgiveness, kindness, these things feed the Holy Spirit because they last forever. These things feed the Holy Spirit and these, and the Holy, and these things feed your spirit. So you can grieve the Holy Spirit and run him away. Uh, uh, I think Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 or 30 says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you are sealed until the day of redemption. I think it's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, 30, something like that. I'm not sure. But but, but these things feed the Holy Spirit, not grieve the Holy Spirit. Guess what? All that stuff against the word of God grieves the Holy Spirit. All that stuff, uh, uh, all that, stuff that say you're doing it in the name of love, but it's... Uh, but it's, but it's contrary to the word of God. Guess what it do? Grieve the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and check this out. When you grieve the Holy Spirit and run him away, when he ain't living inside of you, guess what? He ain't there prompting you and telling you what to do now. He's not. And when, you, when you're making so many decisions against God's word and you run the Holy Spirit off from living inside of your, your body, inside of your mind, well, you don't want to stay there anymore because you're putting too much in him. Besides the word of God, he don't want. He doesn't want to live there anymore. When he doesn't live there anymore, guess what? He's not there telling you go this way, go that way. Don't do this, don't do that. Say this, say that. He's not there. He's not there. Now you can go and uh get yourself get yourself closer to God. You can walk back towards God so you can hear His Holy Spirit. Cause you get so far away, He gone. He ain't living inside of you. He always there. But he ain't living inside of you don't telling you what to do. And if he is telling you what to do, you can't even hear him. You don't know if it's him talking or if it's your own self talking or if it's, if it's Satan talking. Because God's sheep knows his voice. And the stranger's voice, they will not answer. They won't answer. And so those things are fulfilling the, the lust of the flesh. Most of this stuff is fulfilling the lust of the flesh. And that's what we're doing when we, when we succumb. To, 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 to what society wants if it goes against the word of God. We're fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Now, and I, as I said, not only your lust of your flesh, but the lust of their flesh too. Especially and specifically when you encourage, entice, promote, condone, allow, and help them to commit sin and lawlessness against God, against God's word. Uh, when uh, When we walk in the spirit, we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh and we are children of God. That's Romans 8, 14. I didn't write it down, but this Romans 8, 14 said we are, uh, whoever is led, they that are led by the spirit are truly called the sons of God. That's Romans 8, 14. As we grow in Christ, we see that the characteristics of our new nature are the opposite of our old nature. When you grow in Christ, you're going to see that the stuff that you used to do, the stuff that you had a desire for and have a desire for, still have, this stuff is the old man, 
and it's not the new. Though some desires are going to stay around, some actions are going to stay around, some thoughts are going to stay around, some emotions are going to stay around, some stuff you're going to deal with until the day that you die. But you have to distinguish between uh, the old and the new. You must know that the new stuff is in Christ. The old stuff is not in Christ. Any man in Christ is a new creation, a new creature. Old things have passed away. The old things are dead. Behold, all things have become new. Now, you can go and revive those things. They still laying there on the ground. They dead. They're laying there on the ground dead. But what you can do is go breathe life into them and bring those old things, bring that old man right back. I often tell my wife, I say, look, I don't want to go down the road to see it. That's going to be bad for everybody. It is. I don't want to walk back down the road to, of sin. That ain't something I want to do. Nobody's going to benefit from it except Satan and his and his and his minions. They're going to benefit because they're going to have they're going to see me doing wrong and hurting somebody, and they're going to enjoy that me doing wrong, me committing sin, harming myself, harming other people. Uh, they're going to uh, they're going to see a whole lot of stuff, and so that's the only thing they gain out of it. But they, that's all they gain from it, and so. We can't allow the enemy to have, it said, do, do not give place to the devil. That's what the scripture says. Do not give, don't give him an inch. You give him an inch, he going to try to take a mile, not a foot. <laughs> he going to, not a yard. He going to try to take a mile. You give him an inch, he going to try to take a mile. And so as we grow in Christ, we see the new man is not the same. It's the opposite of the old man. And, 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 uh, and, we desire to please God if we are in the in the Lord. If we are in Jesus Christ. We are well, our new man, living from a new man's perspective. We desire to please God. So that means that we treat people how we want to be treated, but only according to the word of God and the standards of God. I just said this. I just said, love your neighbor as you love yourself, but according to the word of God and the standards of God. It cannot go against God's word. I had this down here, but I, I couldn't. It felt like it was out of place. Matthew twenty-two, Jesus says, "The first commandment, the most important commandment, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength." And the second commandment is just like it: love your neighbor as yourself. I might have said Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine. Love your neighbors, Matthew twenty-two thirty-eight. 2237 is love God. 2238 is love your neighbor. 2239 is all the law and the prophets hang on these two commands. I think that's right. Matthew, but that's where it's at. Matthew 22, verse 37, 38, and 39. And, and Jesus says, love the Lord first, and second, love your neighbor. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's just like uh, there's a door. I always make you a know, crazy, weird example. It's just like uh, I tell you, all right. Um, the washing machine. I'm just thinking about the washing machine over in that room. So turn on the wash, twist that doorknob and open that door, walk in there and turn on the washing machine. There you go. Boom. Simple instruction. Twist the doorknob, walk in the door, and turn on the washing machine. But what? But if you don't twist the doorknob first, if you don't walk in the door second, you cannot turn on the washing machine third. See, if you try to turn on the washing machine without walking through the door, you try to walk through the door without twisting the door and not opening the door, it does not work. You cannot love your neighbor and hate God. You can't hate, you can't, you can't love God and hate your neighbor. All of it's got to be simultaneous. It's got to be, it's got to, and may not, all of it's got to be together. It's got, in order for you to love the way God wants you to love, you must love God. And then the love of God is poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. God's love is poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who, is, who he has given us. Those people, those people who claim they're doing things in the name of love, if you don't have Jesus, you can't do anything in the name of love. You're doing it for a different, for a different reason. Paul says, anything not done from faith is sin. So whatever you're doing, if it's based on you not having faith in Jesus, it's sin. Your life must be based on your faith in Jesus Christ or your life is sinful 
and it don't bear it don't bear anything. God used sinful people. God used people. I, it's in vain. Everybody's life is simple, but it's in vain. Everything. I'm, I'm gonna say what the scriptures say instead of trying to put it in my own words. Whatever is not done from faith is sin. Whatever you do, whatever you do, if you're doing it and your faith is in anybody other than Jesus Christ, is sin. You must have faith in Jesus Christ for your life to be worth something. For your act, to, for your actions your, to be worth something. You must have for your life to be anything. It must be in Christ, or else you're living in vain. You know what I'm saying? Some people do live in vain in the name of love, but what they call love is not love. Uh, when the word shows us the truth, we can either accept it or we can reject it. We can promote it or we can deny it. Paul says that he put away childish things when he became a man. He said, when I was, chi when I was a child, I, I thought as a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Uh, <clears throat> children want things to go their way even when they are wrong. Children want stuff to go their way even when they're wrong. They, daddy, mommy, they, 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 I, I, I can see my little girl. I would think she's right. I'll, that's a problem in this house. Everybody here, I would think they're right. I am in this house, so I'm included. That's a, that's a flaw. Thinking that you're right is a flaw. I, I always wanting to be right is a flaw. I pray against that. I say, Lord, I don't want to be right. I don't want to think that I'm right all the time. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I don't get into. Uh, I don't. I don't. That's why I don't intentionally try to get into a lot of politics and opinionated, uh, subjective things. Ooh, subjective things because if I give my opinion in a situation and my opinion is flawed and messed up or doesn't make sense, when I try to deliver the word of God to you. You're gonna look like my the word of God that I'm delivering to you is flawed and 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 crazy and don't make sense. So I try not to mix. I try not to get into politics. I try not to get into anything unless the word of God backs me up on it. You know what I'm saying? When I'm on here mentioning presidential stuff and politics, the word of God says something about it. But I don't. I just can't. And I gotta preach. I just can't. I God help me. I don't want to. I, I shouldn't. I should not get into opinionated things i should not get into subject subjective things because when you when your opinions are flawed people don't want to hear you don't want to hear what you have to say and then that 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 takes away from you uh ministering or delivering the word of god to them that's how i'm gonna put that if i was to be opinionated and i've seen it happen i've seen me be wrong about something with my wife then the next minute I'm trying to say something scriptural and then it might go in one ear and come out the other because I was just wrong 10 minutes ago and I didn't want to be right, you know? So that's a flaw. That is a flaw. And as I said here, uh, children, all children always want to be right about something. That's a childish thing to want to be right all the time. Uh, even when uh, no children not, not want to be right. I saying that wrong. I'm saying I'd be wanting to be right. And, I don't want things to go my way. I want things to go the way of the Lord. I just think I'm right about a lot of things. And most time, most time I am, but sometimes I'm wrong. But children want things to go their way. So I don't want things to go my way. That's a childish behavior to have if you want all everything to go your way. Children want things to go their way even when they are wrong. And most of the times, they are wrong. Children. I ain't talking bad about them, but they they don't have the experience. They were ain't no matter if they five or fifteen or, or twenty five. Your children twenty five. If your children are twenty five, they still don't have the life experience that you have. And so, more than likely, if they take up talking about something that requires experience, they're going to be wrong, and you're going to have more experience in that area. You may not have that may not be an area of expertise, but you may be experienced. And so. Children want things to go their way, even when they are wrong. And most of the time, they are wrong. Let me ask you this question. I'm about to let you go. It's 725. Are we merely uh, little children doing whatever our hearts desire? Or are we mature in the Lord, understanding that it's better to do His will? 
See, that's the question. Because Paul says, I put away those childish things when I became a man. Are you still a little kid wanting everything to go your way? When it contradicts the word of God, when it goes against the word of God, are you making excuses like a little child saying, well, that, that, that wasn't, that was for his time that he, he only wrote that for them guys right there. It's not, guess what? Everything that happened then, it happened, is happening now. And everything that's happening now is going to happen again. Nothing is new under the sun. Even the stuff that were going on in the church, it was going on before there was a church. See what I'm saying? Stuff still going on before there was a church. And so stuff going to still continue to go on. And the word of God is for us, not, not for just a, a past time only. Uh, some some of the some of the things were 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 uh, were primarily for the the Israelites as they walked with God in, in the Old Testament. You know, some like the, wore, the way they wore their clothes and food they ate and things like, and the way they uh, offered sacrifices and did ceremonial things and stuff like that. Uh, but they still come to the New Testament, still come to our lives and say. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, which means keep his commands. And love your neighbor as yourself, which means treat your neighbor like you want to be treated. That's what love is. That's what love is. Are we little children not understanding what love is? Just wanting everything to go our way. We want to do things our way and say, yeah, it's in the name of love. You a lie. If you sin in the name of love, it's a lie. That's what it is. It's not love. It's a lie. If you sin in you sinning in the name of sin. You sin in the name of a lie, but it's not in the name of love. God, the James chapter one, verse thirteen. When anyone is tempted, don't let him not say, "I am tempted by God," because God does not tempt anyone with sin, and He cannot be tempted by sin. It says that James chapter one, verse thirteen, fourteen. It says, "No." Our own lust, our own desires, we are enticed by our own and pull, we drawn away in, by our own desires, our own lust, our own, our own uh needs and wants for, for to fulfill the lust of the flesh. And when we drawn away, that's when we sin. And sin, once it becomes full grown, leads to death. That's how sin rolls. That ain't how God rolls. Think God won't death for you? No. And the Lord's favor is life. Then in the Lord's favor is life. God favors life. God wants us to live. God, want, God wants you to live, not to die, especially not to die in your sin. That's why he's so patient and long suffering with us. He's not willing that any of us should perish, but that all of us should come to repentance. That's what God desires. So how can he want you to come to repentance and want you to live in sin at the same time? These don't work together. Repentance is turning your mind, your heart, your back towards sin, having a change of mind, saying that all sin is wrong, even if it's his, hers, or mine. It's all wrong. That's what God says. Repent from sin. Now, why would he say walk into sin? Why would he say, okay, it's okay, go ahead and sin, if he's telling you not to sin? Nowhere in the Bible does the Lord say, go ahead and sin. But there are many places where the Lord says, stop sinning, repent. See what I'm saying? And people take this love thing. I told you, I'm telling you what love is not. Not what love is. The Bible tell you what love is. I'm telling you what love is not because it's not in the Bible. People take this love thing and say, I'm going to commit sin in the name of love. Wrong. You got it all wrong, man. You're wrong. You, I'm going to tell you all. Uh, I'm going to tell you in the words of, of Joe Dirt, <laughs> you're wrong, brother. <laughs> that what he say. You're wrong, brother. And you are. If you think that you can sin in the name of love and, ca and call yourself justified in the name of love, wait till you get up there and see God and see what he tell you. Ask him about it. No, ask him about it before you get up there. You got to wait. Ask God, God, am I doing wrong by sinning and calling it love? And see what he tell you. I don't know, maybe it'll tell you something different than what I'm saying. But I don't think he's going to contradict his word. So we're not merely children just doing whatever we want, whatever our hearts desire. But we are mature in the Lord, understand that it is better to do his will. Let me tell you something I'm about to let you go. I've already said it, though. But I'm going to say this. Love never fails. 
First Corinthians chapter 13 says, love never fails. I don't know if it's what verse it is. Maybe verse. I don't know what verse it is. But it says, love never fails. And First John chapter 4 says, God is love. What does that mean? Put that together. God doesn't fail. God says, if you love me, you will keep my commands. That's what I'm leaving with right there. All this talk about love. All this talk about love. And the Lord says, if you love me, you will keep my commands. Do you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? Do you love your neighbor? If you love the Lord, you're going to keep the Lord's commands. If you love your neighbor, you're still going to keep the Lord's commands because you have to love the Lord first. So just because you break the commands doesn't mean that uh, you uh, doesn't mean you're not saved. Just because you're sin doesn't mean you're not saved. It just means you need to tighten up. Tighten up, man. Get yourself together. Go. The only way you can get yourself together is to go to God. Go to God and lay it all down. Right. That's getting yourself together. The only way you can get your all your car fixed is for you to take your car to the car shop and leave it there until they fix it. The only way you can get yourself together is to take yourself to God and leave yourself there on that altar, that old man, until God fixes you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, God, that you fix us, Lord. We were broken that we, God, we were broken from the beginning, from the beginning of our lives. But it is you who fix us, God. It is you who saves us, redeems us, repairs us, Lord God, and restores us and revives us to a new life. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. God, I was messed up, but you fixed me. I thank you for fixing me. Fix everybody, Lord. Fix my wife. Fix my children. Fix my 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 mother, my cousins, my sister, my brothers, my aunties, my uncles, my nieces, my nephews, my grandchildren, my grandmother, my in-laws, all my family, friends, and loved ones and relatives, and my neighbors. Fix them all, Lord. Fix us all, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Whenever we break, whenever we mess up, Lord God, fix us. So that we can walk according to your will, Lord. Let your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. God, hide your word in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. Have your way, Father. Fix us. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, that's it for Morning Cup of Jesus. That's, I've been on here 42 minutes. Woo, man, that's a long time. That's If the Lord is willing, we're going to be right back here tomorrow morning around the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you. Enjoy your day.